water is essential to life. Access to good quality water is critical to our health and well-being. But this has been a struggle in India. Over 70 million Indians don't have access to drinking water. In our villages, women still have to walk long distances to get potable water. In our cities, groundwater levels are falling and potable water is increasingly being purchased. How can science play a role in changing this? What new research coming out of Indian institutions can change access to water? What new strides have we made in improving our water knowledge? How can we be truly self-sufficient and ensure universal access to water? With rapid urbanization and rising populations, groundwater levels in India have fallen. This will get worse. Data shows that by 2030, the country's water demand will be twice the available supply, employing severe water scarcity for crores of Indians. A sensible way of ameliorating the problem is rainwater harvesting, where we turn to surface water instead of groundwater. We get an average of 1,000 to 1,200 millimeters of rainfall in India annually. But most of this is wasted. If this rainwater is collected and saved for reuse, we can address some of our water needs. Rainwater harvesting is a simple and sustainable technique which catches the rain where it falls and stores it before it is lost as surface runoff. Let's see how rainwater harvesting works. Rain falls on the roofs of houses or buildings and flows through a pipe to a storage chamber. Before reaching to the storage chamber, the water falls on a sand bed filter which has an upper layer of sand and a lower layer of rock pebble. This works as a filter and cleans the rainwater which contains dust particles, soil, bird droppings and leaf litter. The clean water then flows into the storage chamber which can either be used to meet daily needs or can be further transferred to the wells or recharge pits to recharge the groundwater. We travel to the city of Bangalore to meet A.R. Shivkumar known as the Rain Man. This senior scientist formerly served as the principal investigator for rainwater harvesting at the Karnataka State Council for Science and Technology, a Bangalore-based government body. India is blessed with uh, so much of natural resources and water is one among them. In fact, we have plenty of rainfall. We should not have water problem if we manage our resources properly. In a city which has very low water level availability, Shiv Kumar's house does not have municipal water connection. He has not paid a pesa for any of his water expenses. He has managed with all the water he has harvested in rains in storage tanks. Since 1995, when the house was built, even drinking water needs are met through rainwater. Let's explore the tools that Shiv Kumar worked out to simplify rainwater harvesting at home. Rainwater is pure, but when it comes in contact with any collection surface, it gets contaminated. So the key to good rainwater harvesting is the filtration system. Shiv Kumar has developed a filter called the Rain Tap Roof Water Filter that cleans the rainwater before storing it in the underground tanks. This roof water filter which I have developed has many components. The most important component is the first flush and the cartridge which I have developed. The cartridge has different layers of mesh of different size and through an accredited laboratory it has been tested for 99.5% efficiency at 10 microns and 98.5% for 5 micron level of filtration. That is one of the best filters available and scientifically developed filter. This filter is vertically installed on the wall of any building and removes impurities before the rainwater is collected. This simplifies the entire process of rainwater harvesting. Shiv Kumar has worked intensively with local authorities to emphasize the importance of rainwater harvesting systems. 
Over the years, he has designed and implemented many projects in Bengaluru, including at the Vidhan Sauda, the Karnataka High Court, the GPO, Indian Institute of Science and Bengaluru International Airport. He has played an instrumental role in getting the Karnataka government to pass an amendment to the BWSSB Act that made rainwater harvesting compulsory for houses and offices with an area greater than 2400 square feet in Bengaluru. He has implemented hundreds of rainwater harvesting projects over Karnataka, leading to over 10 lakh families getting access to safe and clean drinking water through rainwater harvesting. Shiv Kumar's expertise and technical know-how is being utilized by the government of Meghalaya to build a rainwater harvesting infrastructure in the state. His system is now being propagated in Africa as well as in some developing nations by the Norwegian government. Other than rainwater harvesting, Shiv Kumar has also worked out ways of using water efficiently at home. He has designed an effective grey water recycling system. Here, the outlet water from his washing machine is stored in a separate tank, which is pumped through a motor and goes into an overhead tank, which is used later on for flushing toilets in the house. In the same way, water from the kitchen is stored and used for gardening. He has also developed a technique called Accelerated Recharge Well, by which the rainwater can be pumped back into the ground to recharge the dried bore wells and underground water. Go to any city and town, we have millions of these wells which are sucking water from the ground. So then I thought that we should replenish that water. So there is an accelerated recharge well which I have developed. Mother Earth takes lots of water. Millions of litres of water can be pumped back into these dry aquifers where we have already drawn water. With his indigenous technological development, Shiv Kumar has improved our water management systems and set up a path that could lead to self-sufficiency. I believe strongly that such kind of initiatives of water conservation measures, rainwater harvesting, taking the technology, science to the people through the simple ways and also to explain to them to, for the adoption goes a long way to build sustainability through this program of Atma Nirbhai Bharat. India has made rainwater harvesting compulsory in many states like Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Kerala. In other states, new buildings and larger buildings need to plan for rainwater harvesting. This is a great step to ensure that water is managed better and is available year-round. However, there are many other issues India faces while trying to access clean water. Studies have shown that a lot of water in rural India is contaminated. A 2019 study revealed that more than 4 crore people in rural India drink water contaminated by heavy metals, fluoride, arsenic and nitrate. How does Indian science come up with ways of addressing this? Keep watching to see an innovative, inexpensive solution. India Science Channel was launched in the year 2019 by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The internet-based dedicated science web channel is being implemented and managed by Vigyan Prasar, committed towards science communication. The channel features science documentaries, discussions on current topics, interviews and different programs covering the entire landscape of science and technology to make science popular among the masses. India Science is a flagship project of Vigyan Prasar. And over an year and a half, we have produced more than 1,200 videos of different sizes, lengths, and are from different genres and for different domains for the people of the country. We've, uh, we've taken, we've spoken, we've gotten, uh, we've dived deep into the reams of uh, different domains of science and technology. And we have uh, gotten news, stories, films, videos, in almost every format that you can think of. OTT, for that matter, is a great platform that helps uh, anybody to look for any news, any item, any uh, video, any documentary at any point in time. All you need to do is to subscribe a channel for it. One can also download India Science mobile app from Google Play Store or Apple Store to view this channel.
for its water needs, almost 80% of India depends on groundwater for both drinking and irrigation. A worryingly large percentage of this water is contaminated. Data from government sources show that 200,000 Indians die every year because they are drinking, washing and bathing in contaminated water. Arsenic, in specific, has emerged as a big threat in the groundwater in the Ganga Brahmaputra plains, especially in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Punjab and Haryana. According to reports, about 239 million people in 21 states of India access water with an unacceptably high level of arsenic. What exactly is arsenic? It is a chemical element with the symbol AS, an atomic number 33 in the periodic table. It is a non-metal, tasteless, odorless and widely distributed in the Earth's crust. Arsenic is highly toxic in its inorganic form. It occurs naturally in the environment in trace quantities in all rocks, soil, water and air and also as a byproduct of some agricultural and industrial activities. It can enter drinking water through the ground or as runoff into surface water sources. Now, arsenic in drinking water is absorbed through the intestine into the bloodstream through which it reaches various organs and can lead to adverse health effects. Chronic exposure to arsenic causes skin problems, affects the nervous system, the reproductive system, the gastrointestinal system and causes much damage to the body. WHO guidelines state that the permissible limit of arsenic in drinking water is a concentration of 10 parts per billion. For India, the WHO has said that because of paucity of water, arsenic levels of 0.05 mg per litre could be treated as permissible. But in some parts of the West Bengal, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, this level has gone up to 3000 parts per billion ppb, 300 times the WHO permissible limit, while the normal range in other districts and villages is between 300 and 1000 ppb. Now the body has the capacity to absorb some arsenic, but these kind of quantities can have adverse effect on health and can even be fatal. A scientist from IIT Madras, Professor T. Pradeep, started working on finding a solution for this problem. He turned to nanomaterials, which are extremely small particles in the range of a nanometer, which is 10 to the power 9 meter or 1 billionth of a meter. Nanomaterials have a very large surface area. They have a very large reactivity. We knew all that and we have been studying this aspect. How about directing that research to water contamination? People have been directing that research to something else. Uh, for example, catalysis. Uh, people have been looking at uh, drug delivery. But I said, maybe those are important, but those may not be the areas in which people will be directly benefited in the short term. Professor Pradeep and his team developed a nanomaterial-based arsenic water purifier which he called Amrit, arsenic and metal removal by Indian technology, to overcome this issue of water contamination. How did they manage this? The team managed to develop a novel nanomaterial capable of removing numerous contaminants. The purification process takes place in two stages. First, the microbial impurities are removed by killing them with very small concentrations of silver ions released from silver nanoparticles. Silver ions, which flow from nanoparticles when oxidized, have been long known for their ability to effectively kill bacteria. After this, the water passes through various nanoparticles that include iron oxide and iron oxyhydroxide. These nanoparticles, because of their large surface and easy chemical modification, show an unprecedented absorption capacity for arsenic. In this stage, a range of contaminants including arsenic, pesticides and other heavy metals are removed one by one. 
The challenge was to filter water as it flowed. So these units were designed and connected to the mouths of the hand pumps. The system does not need electricity or pipe water supply. The only thing required for operation is gravity. It requires less than a minute of contact time for Amrit to purify the water of arsenic. So we have developed a methodology so that it is ultra fast particulate and dissolved iron. Iron can be removed. Uh, and uh, then it goes into an arsenic filter. And then it goes to uh, a microbial filter if needed and then it gets distributed. Amrit water purifier provides water at a cost of less than 5 pesa per litre. The purifier is adaptable to local conditions and the type of contamination. It reduces the arsenic content in water to less than 2 ppb, which is one-fifth of WHO's permissible limits. Our research project was called as affordable clean water using nanotechnology. So if it is not affordable, no point uh, in looking at it. Well, it is not just affordable, it has to be sustainable. It has to be implementable in a country like ours. Cleaning and maintenance of this purifier is also very easy. Maintenance takes just 15 minutes, twice every month. There are three versions of the water purifier based on volume. The first is for cleaning of large volumes of water. It is installed at the water distribution setup where water is pumped in the overhead tanks and then supplied through water pipeline. The second is installed with the hand pumps as an individual unit. The third is for domestic purpose which cleans around 10 litres of water. This filter was first tested as a pilot project in the Nadia and Murshidabad district of West Bengal. It is now installed in over 1500 locations all over the country. Earlier, the drinking water was contaminated with iron and arsenic and was causing various health issues. But now the government has installed this filter through which we are getting clean and contaminants free water. The Indian government has recommended the use of this filter in all states that have been affected due to arsenic contamination. The government is working on that. The new 102 units will have online control and the first few units with online control have been implemented already. But altogether now we have over 1,500 or so uh, installations. A simple, inexpensive, effective, indigenously developed solution to increase access to water for all. A huge step in our journey to reach true self-sufficiency. Whatever the technologies we develop, it is critical that it spreads across the nation and reaches the communities. We next visit an institute working to use science to make real change in our access to clean water. India Science Channel was launched in the year 2019 by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The internet-based dedicated science web channel is being implemented and managed by Vigyan Prasar, committed towards science communication. The channel features science documentaries, discussions on current topics, interviews and different programs covering the entire landscape of science and technology to make science popular among the masses. India Science is a flagship project of Vigyan Prasar. And over an year and a half, we have produced more than 1,200 videos of different sizes, lengths, and are from different genres and for different domains for the people of the country. We've, uh, we've taken, we've spoken, we've gotten, uh, we've dived deep into the reams of uh, different domains of science and technology. And we have uh, gotten news, stories, 
films, videos, in almost every format that you can think of. OTT for that matter is a great platform that helps uh, anybody to look for any news, any item, any uh, video, any documentary at any point in time. All you need to do is to subscribe a channel for it. One can also download India Science mobile app from Google Play Store or Apple Store to view this channel. Safe and regular supply to water is the backbone of any community, country or economy. Across India, there have been numerous movements, big and small, to clean up water bodies and water sources, to improve access to water. One institute doing in-depth research on water-based issues is the National Institute of Hydrology, NIH, in Rurki. Scientists here are pushing research and development activities to find solutions to the emerging hydrological and water resource problems. They do basic as well as applied research studies. We are working on the managed aquifer recharge and the basic purpose is to recharge the groundwater. How in a best possible way, how, can how we can recharge the groundwater so that our water levels uh, stops depleting further. So we are working on uh, that technology also. Then we are working on uh, storage aquifer and uh, recovery method. Then we are also working on uh, river bank filtration scheme to improve the uh, good quality of water or to provide the uh, amen, uh, to provide sufficiency in uh, water for the drinking purpose. One innovative technique applied by the team at NIH is known as river bank filtration. Let's see how this works. First, water is pumped out from bore wells which are drilled within a few hundred meters of a surface water body. This pumping lowers the groundwater and draws in the river water. This river water together with the groundwater flows through the porous riverbed sediments. As this water travels, dissolved and suspended contaminants as well as pathogens are removed or significantly reduced. This scheme has been incorporated in four pilot schemes to demonstrate its feasibility. This includes one in Mathura, one in Agra on the banks of the Yamuna River, one in Barhara village in Bihar on the banks of the Ganga River, and one in Vomavaram village in Andhra Pradesh on the banks of Varaha River. So, we have four schemes developed. So, this is the four state water supply department. In these four schemes, the local water departments were our collaborators. Design and whole process was shared with them. Basically, we developed demonstration schemes and handed over to them so that based on the requirement and feasible location, they can be used again. Another key area of work is to improve access to drinking water by managing and recharging aquifers. An aquifer is an underground body of rock or sediment that serves as a storage reservoir for groundwater. Groundwater enters an aquifer as precipitation seeps through the soil. It can move through the aquifer and resurface through springs and wells. There are a number of methods used to recharge aquifers. Different techniques are selected on the basis of local conditions. One technique is infiltration ponds. In this, the surface water is diverted into the infiltration ponds which recharges the aquifers. Another technique is recharged through check dams. In this, small check dams are built on seasonal streams and drains. During the monsoons, rainwater is accumulated in these dams. It seeps through the ground and recharges the aquifer. In a coastal area, salinity in water is an issue. So to solve that, check dams are built there to improve the access and availability of fresh water. The institute has also worked on another technique, aquifer storage and recovery. In this technique, fresh water is injected in an aquifer at a certain depth so that it does not mix with the saline water. 
Because of the density difference between the saline water and the fresh water, a bubble of fresh water is created in the saline aquifer. This fresh water can stay intact for days without losing its water quality. This water can later be recovered from the aquifer for domestic purposes. This water can also be used for drinking after filtration. This ASR technique is currently being tested in Mewat, Haryana for supplying the water at the community level. In Mewat, the salinity level in water is very high and not at all drinkable. And because of this, the socio-economical condition of the people is also very bad. We are going to test it in Mewat for that location has been already finalized and the paperwork is also done. Now, we will start the test on the field and we will check for its success. This technique has been tested on a prototype model built in the institute. For the purpose of the experiment, a saline solution of high concentration is prepared. The electrical conductivity, EC and temperature of this were measured with an EC meter. This solution was mixed with sand till it was saturated. Layers of sand and soil from the test site in Mewat was also kept to model an artificial aquifer. This was then connected to a fresh water source. Because of the density difference, a water bubble was created. The test was run for 30 days and then the water was recovered and tested. The readings on the EC meter showed that the water was pure. This is a simple technique that can provide water without huge infrastructure or environmental footprints. And by these efforts, the water quality also improves. And improved water quality means better health of the people. If they are healthy, they can contribute in the constructive development of the country. जो कंस्ट्रक्टिव एक्टिविटीज हैं डेवलपमेंटल एक्टिविटीज में उसमें काफी योगदान दे सकते हैं साइंस बाउंड्रीज आर पुश्ड एंड इनोवेशंस आर इंप्लीमेंटेड ऑन द ग्राउंड ऑल ऑफ दिस पुशेस आवर एक्सेस टू क्लीन वाटर इफ दीस आइडियाज आर स्केल्ड अप एंड रेप्लिकेटेड वी कैन बी ट्रूली सेल्फ सफिशिएंट इन आवर एक्सेस टू क्लीन वाटर